As Chief Scientist of the Met Office, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to respond to your questions that you, the public, have sent in around the science of climate change. It is very confusing and there are a lot of mixed messages out there about what climate change really means, how robust the science is, and of course the science also is very complex. But I think there are some clear messages and these messages are really important, particularly as we go into the very unprecedented negotiations that must go on in Copenhagen in the next two weeks to address the challenge that we, the world, face from growing emissions of carbon dioxide in particular. So in the next 10 minutes or so in this podcast, we're going to talk around some of the questions that you've raised. And I hope that you will go away understanding a bit, a little bit more about what we at the Met Office and indeed the international scientific community understand about climate change and the enormous challenge that the world faces from global warming. Um, there have been a lot of questions about carbon dioxide and whether it's genuinely responsible for climate change. And so the first question would really be, um, how do we know that carbon dioxide is responsible for the climate change that we've seen and can we prove it? Well, we know that carbon dioxide is a very potent greenhouse gas and although it's not the dominant greenhouse gas in our atmosphere, by changing, by increasing its concentrations, we know that it will have a, a very significant impact on the radiative balance of the planet and lead to changes in temperature. But it's important to put this in context because, in fact, water vapour is the most abundant greenhouse gas in the atmosphere and it's the reason why this planet is habitable. Without it, we would be a much colder place and life would not thrive if we didn't have water vapour. What carbon dioxide is doing now is enhancing that greenhouse effect. So we understand the basic physics of that. It's enhancing that greenhouse effect and leading to an increase in temperature. So we're trapping more energy into the planet because of, of, of increasing levels of carbon dioxide. How do we know that it matters? Well, you don't have to really think too hard that if you've gone from before we started in our industrial activities in the 19th century, carbon dioxide levels were at 280 parts per million by volume. We are now rapidly approaching 390 parts per million, which means it's been a 40% increase. Most of that increase has happened in the last 50 years. And if we know that carbon dioxide greenhouse gas, it's hard to believe that if you increase it by 40%, you're not going to do something to the temperature of the planet. So one of the other questions related to carbon dioxide was whether we genuinely know that um, the, the carbon dioxide that's causing climate change is man-made or whether it could be from natural causes. That's right. Of course, carbon dioxide does exist naturally in the atmosphere and is part of the carbon cycle of the planet, which we increasingly understand in, in, in considerable detail now, uh, of how the biosphere and, of course, indeed animals, such as cows, contribute not just to carbon dioxide, but methane is another carbon-based gas in the atmosphere, which is also a potent greenhouse gas. So in fact, it's methane we're often talking about when we think about how animals contribute to the carbon loading in the atmosphere. What, um, of course, is happening now is we can track our emissions. We can actually uh, monitor how much we're emitting through energy production, transport, and so forth. And we can relate that quite closely to the trend that we've seen in carbon dioxide levels, which we also monitor uh, very carefully in various places around the world. We've seen that rise over the last few decades and we can relate that to emission levels of, from, our, from human activities. It's also been raised that in the studies of the paleoclimate, in the climate going back over hundreds of thousands of years, that um, there's evidence that temperature rises came first and then there are rises in carbon dioxide. Um, how do we know that that's not happening now? Yes, yeah, so this is looking back at the glacial interglacial cycles, which is looking at records of past climate based on ice cores. And we can back out what the carbon dioxide concentration was, and we can use other proxies to tell us how we think the temperature changed. 
The important difference here is, as, as you rightly say, temperature changes have led the changes in carbon dioxide levels by as much as hundreds of years is what the ice core records tell us. And the reason that happened is that the forcing agent in that case was changes in the Earth's orbit about the Sun. So quite big changes in the amount of energy that the planet receives from the Sun. So that was the forcing agent. That caused the temperatures to change. As the temperatures changed, then the biosphere responded and carbon dioxide levels changed and served to amplify the temperature change forced by changes in the input of, of solar radiation into the planet from the sun. What we're happening now is a completely different situation where we know that the input of energy from the sun to the planet is almost constant and, and the variations are so small that they cannot, they're a tenth of what uh, would be needed to explain the temperature changes we're seeing. So what we know now is that actually it's carbon dioxide that's changing first through our activities and temperature is responding. And what we now fear is that as our planet warms, then the effect that we saw through these interglacial glacial cycles where carbon dioxide followed the temperature change will also come into play probably in the latter half of this century and beyond and amplify even further the, temp the warming that we're seeing as a result of our emissions into the atmosphere. Many people have asked whether the current global warming we're seeing could be because of natural causes that has been in the past. Um, what would your answer be to that? This is a really difficult question and this is the one that, that I think challenges us most of all. And I think if we go back to what I've previously said about uh, how carbon dioxide acts on the energy of the planet and how our activities have contributed to that, we can test that in our climate models and we can see that actually the sorts of patterns of change that we've observed over the last 50 years, we cannot explain unless we bring in this enhanced level of carbon dioxide as the cause. So yes, it's right that, that the, the climate does have natural variations on all sorts of timescales from year to year, associated with things like El Nino, which we hear a lot about, to longer timescales, um, and even things like the variations that we see in the record around the Little Ice Age, the medieval warm period, they're all parts of natural variability of the climate system. But what we're finding now is that the fingerprint, as we might call it, of global warming looks very different. If we look at it not just in terms of surface temperature, but if we look at it in terms of uh, the temperature changes throughout the atmosphere, through changes in, in uh, rainfall patterns, through changes in how much water the atmosphere is holding, all those things are the fingerprints that tell us that this is not the same as the natural variations that we've seen in the past. And even if we go back to the big gyrations that the, planet of, uh, the, 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 the climate of the planet has gone through in the ice ages, as I've already discussed, they, those are not the same as the ones that we're seeing now. And in particular, the rate of warming is far more rapid than we have ever seen in any of those records of glacial and interglacial cycles. So our planet is changing at an unprecedented rate and that, again, is not consistent with natural cycles within the climate system.